Hey everyone, I'm just giving this video a little bit of an alternate intro where I'm actually going to just speak into the camera. I'm doing this as I'm editing it um, because the intro I scripted out wasn't very good, in my opinion, at introducing what this video actually is about. Um, basically, I'm going to look at the the recent stasis nerfs for PvP, uh, but it's not necessarily going to be a, oh, is stasis still good? Is stasis gutted? Is Are these nerfs enough? Does, do we need more? Um, it's more of a how the nerfs and more specifically how long these nerfs took to come out combined with a few things about stasis and how it's designed led to um, some frustration in the community and I mean stasis was a big point of contention so I think it's important that I mention it uh, that way but there's a couple things I'm going to reference a couple other videos a, a podcast episode and another YouTube video um, just for how other people have talked about similar topics in game design it's a little more it is a little more game design focused for like live games and how balance is important for them and also the speed at which balance occurs uh, but those videos will be linked down below in the description uh, for anyone that wants to check those out i'd recommend i think both of them have very good takes on the matter although not necessarily destiny focused but that said, there is a little bit of Apex and a little bit of League of Legends um, info that I draw on, just because those are other games I've played that have done similar things. Uh, as a result, I just hope you enjoy the video. If you like it, you know, like, subscribe, all that. And if you don't, let me know. Leave a dislike, let me know in the comments what I can do better. But it's a very different video from what I normally do. It's a little more of a discussion uh, that I hope to drive with the, uh, the video today. So... I'm going to stop talking here so I can start talking on the audio track and we can get into the discussion. I uh, hope you enjoy it. Hey everyone and welcome back again to yet another video on my YouTube channel. I'm back after a bit of a short break from making some videos with a bit of a different video than some of the others I've made recently. It's partly my take on some of what I've seen around the community regarding the recent stasis nerfs and partly a look at how live games are developed as a whole. Some people have been praising these stasis nerfs as the balance pass the game needed, while some on the other side of the discussion have been disappointed with some of the nerfs. I'm not necessarily here to take a side on the debate at all, but to mention how the state of Destiny 2's PvP with regard to things like stasis highlights an issue with the game that I've noticed for a little while now. It's not an issue that's unique to Destiny 2 or Bungie as a developer, but I think it's worth pointing out with this example, as it's an easy trap for some developers to fall into when dealing with live games, and I think it's important to point out. However, before I begin, if you like this video or any others on the channel, feel free to leave a like and subscribe, as well as clicking the bell for upload notifications. Also, I'm still streaming Season of the Splicers content over on my Twitch channel, which as always is going to be linked down below, and let's get into it. Before I start giving all my thoughts, I think I need to state that I'm not a game developer, nor do I know everything about game development. Every game is different and every developer works differently. However, I've been very interested in game development for a few years now, and as a result, I've observed a lot of the different things that developers do and don't do, as well as what does and doesn't work for different types of games. This combined with my familiarity with Destiny 2, as well as a couple of other live games, has contributed to my take on this. I'm also going to dip a little bit into my interest in some competitive gaming, even though I know Destiny 2 isn't necessarily an eSport, but I know some of the eSports games, like League of Legends, do a really good job of patching in this way, and I just think it could be important to apply some of that philosophy to Destiny 2's PvP. But I think we should start with the elephant in the room, which is the most recent example of an issue in Destiny 2's ecosystem, and that's going to be Stasis. Stasis was added with Beyond Light, and while it's been relatively well received by the PvE community, the PvP side of things has been absolutely terrorized by Stasis for the last seven months. Uh, freezing, shatter damage, as well as the sheer amount of utility offered by Stasis has remained relatively untouched in PvP since Beyond Light's launch. But why is that such a big deal? I mean, Destiny has always had things be incredibly broken in the game, but Stasis seems to be the biggest point of frustration in a long time, even compared to some really crazy things like Mountaintop, Recluse, Revoker, One-Eyed Mask, and Spectral Blades before it. A lot of what I've seen around the community has been focused on the freezing aspect of Stasis as it is directly unfun to play against in a shooter that prioritizes fast movement, like Destiny. And that I agree with. But part of the issue with Stasis was that it was designed for one thing, but players began using it differently. On the recent Firing Range podcast, the Sandbox Discipline lead, Kevin Yates, and the Weapons Feature lead, Chris Proctor, were interviewed by some very prominent PvP content creators. 
Kevin Yates specifically answered some questions about stasis and why it shipped how it did, as well as some of the design philosophy behind it. The biggest point is that stasis was designed as a defensive option first, but players began using it as an offensive option primarily. A great example of this is how it was designed to use stasis to slow or freeze a shotgun ape rushing towards you or a hunter trying to jump over you with a shotgun, but a lot of those shotgun apes actually began using stasis in order to catch out and catch up to their targets. This difference between a developer's vision and a player's ingenuity is not in any way unique to Destiny. For example, League of Legends pro Insec is known for his famous Lee Sin combo that's literally named after him, and it came from an ability originally designed for disengaging fights being used as a way to throw high priority targets into his team in order to get them killed and win his team a fight. Stasis, however, also came with the issue that being frozen and helpless takes agency away from the player and as a result is incredibly frustrating, especially when it's so strong offensively. It's not just a case of the players being too smart, it's a case of stasis being very overtuned. Instead of just getting killed by damage or even a creative combo, you have to get frozen and watch as you get one shot out of a freeze with no chance to fight back. Another thing I'd like to note from that Firing Range podcast is how Kevin Yates mentioned that internally, the Sandbox team expected to have to nerf Stasis several times to get it into a truly balanced state. This point here, in my opinion, highlights the true issue. Not that Stasis was overpowered, not that it was a defensive subclass that was able to be used very strong offensively, but it's a problem with how Bungie delivers their updates to Destiny 2, especially with respect to PvP. You see, Stasis was in fact nerfed roughly three or four times to put it into its current, much more balanced state. And that on its own isn't the problem. After all, many other games release overpowered weapons, characters, or abilities, and usually after a handful of nerfs, these elements of the game fall into line and don't cause many more problems. The issue with Stasis and many other overpowered things in Destiny's history is just how long it took to bring these items into line. In this case, overpowered Stasis is the symptom, not the disease. The disease, then, is to me at least, Bungie's slow update cycle. Destiny 2 receives one large patch update, every three months, give or take, with the launch of every new season. True, we do get hot fixes here and there, like this week's hot fix that brought some of these stasis nerfs, but these usually involve bug fixes or more minor tweaks, and rarely any large sandbox alterations outside of the seasonal content drop. The problem with that is that it allows any overpowered gameplay elements to overstay their welcome and become frustrating to the players. I'd like to make a quick comparison to another popular first-person shooter that I enjoy playing, Apex Legends. Though in the recently launched Apex Legends Season 9, a new weapon, the Bowcheck Compound Bow, was introduced, and a slight recoil nerf was handed down to one of the game's strongest weapons, the Spitfire Light Machine Gun. The Apex community was very quick to voice their opinions on how strong the Bowcheck was. It did damage comparable to a bolt-action sniper, but it had a faster fire rate, better ammo economy, accurate hip fire, and was silent on top of all of that. As good as the bow check was, the Spitfire's nerf was also a big problem, as it did very little to bring the weapon into line. Most players didn't even notice the change to its recoil. As a result, Respawn, the developers of Apex, took only 12 days to address both of these powerful weapons. They gave the bow check a fairly substantial nerf to its ammo capacity and body shot damage, as well as tweaking the damage values of the Spitfire and reducing its magazine capacity when using the higher tier magazine attachments as well as another pass at its recoil. The community got to have their fun and enjoy some of these cracked weapons while they were really, really strong, but they were brought into line before they began to truly frustrate players and damage community morale in the way Stasis in Destiny's PvP has. Another great example I can bring up is the Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War launch, which had the MP5 as an absolute nightmare weapon. However, this was also nerfed relatively quickly, and it wasn't allowed to reach the point that players were quitting over it. I played during that launch window, I had a lot of fun with the MP5, and it got nerfed pretty quickly before it was really a point where I was like, oh, I've been killed by the MP5 for the millionth time, which is kind of how I felt about stasis until these nerfs. All of this highlights something that I'll call the frustration factor for simplicity's sake, uh, and basically all that really is is the longer that something in a game is overpowered, the more frustrated players will become with it if it's killing them. This really only applies to PvP games, by the way. It's not necessarily something you'll see in PvE. Uh, and here's where Bungie's update methods begin to show its weakness. 
Uh, Stasis was allowed to remain top dog for so long that the enjoyment of Stasis' craziness in PvP turned into genuine frustration at both the game and the developers, to the point that many players and even some streamers and other content creators were quitting or considering quitting over just how hard Stasis had wrecked the game's fun factor, combined with the fact that there were basically no nerfs in sight. This frustration factor isn't even unique to Stasis and Destiny. Because before Stasis, it was the 600 RPM auto meta, the mountaintop meta, Revoker, Spectral Blades, One-Eyed Mask Titans, and the list can go on and on. Each of these powerful items were eventually brought down in time, but many of them were genuinely frustrating to many players before, although they certainly did not feature the same unfun factor as Stasis Freezing. If the nurse for Stasis or any of the other things I had mentioned had been shipped out in a matter of a few weeks instead of a matter of a few months, I guarantee they would be remembered as a more fun, wacky time with a weirdly strong weapon than as a stagnant and frustrating meta like they are now. Hell, the frustration factor isn't even unique to Destiny. Many of my friends play League of Legends, and I used to play it myself. And that game is infamous for featuring things that were incredibly overpowered for quite a long time due to Riot's, now abandoned I must add, philosophy of balancing the game based solely on the higher skill tiers. I know many casual players who are frustrated at things like the champion Draven with the item Death Dance, which was allowed to reign supreme over low rank and normal games for over a year without any nerfs, simply because it wasn't being played in professional play or the highest 3% of ranked games. But speaking of League of Legends, that game also deals with quick update cycles, and it features a new patch roughly every two weeks. These patches include buffs and nerfs of various champions, and contribute to the game's constantly evolving meta. In 2018, former League of Legends professional player Doublelift uploaded a video essay focused on League titled The Downsides of a Constantly Evolving Game. He mentioned in his video how when champions in League receive reworks, they often become entirely different characters from a gameplay perspective, and as a result, the people who dedicated tons of time to maining those champions often feel bad because the way that they had enjoyed playing the game is now completely lost to them. And if we apply this to Destiny, this issue is also present with Stasis. As broken as Stasis was, some players no doubt found out that they loved the playstyle Stasis gave them, and would have continued to play it regardless of any nerfs to its damage numbers. Behemoth Titan, for example, albeit extremely broken, was a lot of fun. It felt like it had a strong combo potential and good mobility. However, after the nerf, Behemoth Titan specifically feels like it's been gutted to a point that it feels really bad to use. I'm not saying it didn't need any nerfs, because it'd be absolutely ludicrous to try and defend it as balanced, nor am I in any way trying to cry that a broken subclass that I thought was fun is now nerfed, but what I am saying is that it was allowed to remain incredibly powerful for such a long time that some players had adapted their playstyles around it. And by taking so long to balance this, those players now are left feeling like much of the time they spent to learning builds and combos for Behemoth were wasted due to one crippling round of nerfs. If Stasis had received its three or four nerfs within a month or two, people wouldn't have been given as long to get attached to the old Behemoth, while still getting to enjoy its broken potential at launch until the nerfs were shipped out. Even then, you might find some people that still enjoy it even after the nerfs. But now, anybody that tries to play Behemoth is just going to be comparing it to the old version that they were used to for seven months. For Destiny, I've often heard it said around the community that a game can either be balanced or the game can be fun. I used to agree with this statement. One of the worst PvP sandboxes for this game ever came in the form of D2 Vanilla, where an attempt was made to strike an almost esports-like balance for the game. It led to incredibly boring and slow gameplay, focused on lane peaking and team shooting with slow times to kill and slow ability recharge rates, as well as a double primary meta. I'm not saying that this method of game design is bad, I'm just saying that this felt very incompatible with Destiny's identity as a game. Stasis, however, proved that argument about balance versus fun false, as Stasis was both unbalanced and unfun. But the unfun aspects of Stasis came from, in my opinion, that previously mentioned frustration factor. It was allowed to rain havoc down on the Crucible for seven and a half months before being brought down to a reasonable state, and its core mechanic is focused on making players helpless, which I think led to Stasis causing much more frustration than other things like getting noob tubed by Mountaintop or watching a one-eyed mask titan heal back to full. There was no way to counter being frozen. 
It was almost as frustrating as playing a game where all your teammates do is run off, die alone, and blame the team. Except that frustration was not coming from other players. It was coming from a core part of the game you were playing. This is why it was pushing players to quit, at least from my observations. With all that said though, I think I should state that I believe Destiny's PvP is a lot of fun when you get to be overpowered. That's part of why I think that the update cycle currently has some problems. Destiny is a game about immortal space wizards after all, so please let us flex some of those powers in the Crucible. But if stasis is just a symptom, how can the disease that is that balancing problem be fixed? I think the number one solution is for Bungie to push out more balance patches for Destiny 2, at least on the PvP side of things. This way, they can buff and nerf things to evolve the meta, and whenever something new and incredibly powerful like stasis comes out, it doesn't overstay its welcome. Older things will also get chances to shine for a little while at a time, so players can enjoy things at their strongest before it inevitably comes back down and falls into line as part of the game, while something else takes its place, and eventually it can come back into the forefront. It also allows you to enjoy different aspects of the game without having it get stale and push players to their breaking point. That said, does Bungie need to push out a patch every two weeks like Riot Games does for League of Legends and Valorant? No but a patch every month or so would be a great place to start, just rebalancing some aspects of the game. It would help to keep things fresh and reduce the amount of frustration and anger that players can begin to feel at parts of the PvP game that are incredibly busted while allowing people to enjoy the game's power fantasy a little more and you'll get to see more diversity in Crucible, again, without it becoming stale. However, that's all from me for this video. If you liked it, feel free to like and subscribe for more videos, and if you have any ideas on how Bungie can go about altering their update strategy, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. This has been Kazungu, and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace out, everybody.